Now it's time for Johnny Harris to tell us why another Cold War is happening. We're exiting a period of incredible growth and relative stability, where after the most destructive war in human history, the U.S. rose to power as the global leader. The American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. And as that leader, the U.S. created new structures like NATO and the World Trade Organization. They established rules, rules about trade, rules about economics, rules about justice, rules that they based on Western philosophical values, now being projected what? around the globe by a country with an astounding amount of alliances and military hardware. Oh, God. For a time, another great empire challenged that order, operating with a different set of rules, a different set of values and philosophies, trading Bad with ones. their own bloc and working with their own alliances. But it couldn't last. The collapse of the Soviet Union in the 90s left the US and their rich allies as the sole setters of the rules, the holders of the power. So the U.S. doubled down, and their system of liberal values, democracy, and free trade spread and fortified throughout the world. But when Yeah, just on its own, by the way, it just kind of happened. It's a thing that just kind of happened. Just like the USSR just kind of collapsed on its own. It was crazy when it collapsed. Remember when it collapsed completely on its own due to uh, the the uh, impossibility of this uh, insane, absolutely unimaginable way of, of organizing society? When you're the global leader, when you're the one who sets all the rules, you get to decide when you follow your own rules. Johnny Harris last week, America is doing coups everywhere. It's unstoppable. Why is it so insane? Uh, it, down to like making... Uh, <laughs> down to like possibly doing terror attacks on its own soil in order to galvanize and, and generate public support to invade countries. Uh, Johnny Harris this week, it's crazy how the USSR collapsed in and of itself completely just on its own. And then democracy started spreading also on its own, liberal democracy in the American way, completely on its own. What happened to like all of the other videos that he made? And when you don't. Being the global superpower has turned more into being the global policeman. Over these last 75 years, the US has been known to violate the values, norms, and ideals that it built the whole global system off of. Cozy no, that violation is how it did it. ...up to strongman dictators, throwing out democratically elected governments, fueling regional wars, and generally trying to stamp out communism across the globe. And anyone who didn't want to play by America's rules was cast out as an insane pariah in need of regime change. The Iraqi regime has plotted to develop anthrax and nerve gas and nuclear weapons for over a decade. And yet, despite this double game the U.S. has played, this system has been a part of the most peaceful period of human history. Major empires don't fight each other like they used to. And a major reason is because they came to understand that getting in line with the American-led system would mean economic opportunity and growth. It wasn't worth a war. Fighting against this system often meant destruction and losing deals for all sides. This peace was also helped by the existence of the most powerful weapons ever invented, which great powers didn't dare use on each other. The American-led system has meant stability and an incredible amount of trade, leading to a dramatic reduction in global poverty. But that era is coming to an end, which until recently was the most populous country on Earth, has risen to become the second largest economy and world's largest military based on active forces. You missed the wild shit he said about the U.S. Peace, uh, bringing peace to the world? Let me guess. Are you ready? I wasn't even here. I'm going to guess it. You can tell me if I'm wrong. The United States spread liberal democracy around the world, even though it violated it in recent years, and that's kind of bad. Not necessarily that like it literally spread the liberal democracy in that exact same capacity that it violated it in recent years, maybe even in more brutal ways in the past, but certainly still. And then that, actually, that, un that, that, that unipolar structure... Uh, create or uh, that one uh, global power structure actually was quite peaceful because there was no other nation state that could ever 
uh, withstand America's awesome power, so they never even fought, uh, which made it even, uh, which made it significantly more peaceful uh, that way. It was that's the reason why it was more peaceful than than years before. Maybe add uh, a little bit of seasoning, sprinkle in the whole uh, nuclear deterrent conversation as well, like uh, the existence of nukes for uh, at the hands of all the biggest states uh, means no one is going to fight each other because of mutually assured destruction. Did I get it right? Was that, was that basically the gist of it? He followed up with trading was more favorable to them than war with liberal democracy in trade. Oh, no, I don't. It's not that I know Johnny Hare as well. It's that this is like the ultimate uh, defense of neoliberal hegemony. That is, I've heard this same argument a million times over. And more and more, China sees the U.S. as an unfair policeman of the global order only holding to the rules that benefit them. And this projection of values and philosophies from the West to the leaders in China, this looks a lot like the modern day version of colonialism. They see this hypocritical American empire, drunk on power that they've had since 1945, an America that is increasingly defensive because it's in decline, with its broken politics, divided people, and a complacency with their spot at the top. So China is building a competing system. In March 2023, China's leader Xi Jinping announced his Global Civilization Initiative, where he stated that countries must, quote, refrain from imposing their own values or models on others and refrain from stoking ideological confrontation. So instead of the hypocritical colonialism of the U.S. imposing their human rights and democracy around the world, his system would be transactional. Okay, 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 okay. That's crazy. The United States was never imposing human rights. What the fuck? This implies there's a there's a faulty premise here. The faulty premise is that the United States was legitimately imposing human rights on other countries. That is the exact opposite. The United States hasn't even done human rights on his own uh, on its own country, okay? On its own soil to its own citizens before we even arrive at its own territories, which are even in worse shape than mainland United States, okay? Let alone, like, the United States, any other country that has better human rights have only been allowed to have it because the United States didn't interfere in their process as aggressively. Like, I don't really understand how you could say that. BRICS is mid-USA forever. I mean, I'm not a BRICS guy by any means, okay? I, I think it's like, kind of ridiculous uh for other reasons but the idea that the united states would uh, uh fucking impose human rights anywhere is so silly stripping away the veil of what he views as a hypocritical rules-based order that is built to basically benefit one group the chinese system would be built on common interests beneficial deals and opportunistic alliances not purported philosophical values and unlike decades past yeah the U.S.'s philosophical values is just a way to sell it to people like Johnny Harris. Like, he must recognize this, right? It's like the World Economic Forum talking about green initiatives or whatever, or how, like, every third daughter has to be transgender, or whatever the fuck they do at the World Eco uh, the Carl Schwab types uh, talk about when, when the real conversation is about consistently uh, reinforcing neoliberal capitalist, uh, Western liberal hegemony. Like... The idea that the United States is imposing human rights on other countries is just what is supposed to make us here in America feel better. Tunistic alliances, not purported philosophical values. And unlike decades past, China now has the military and the money to make it happen, to ignore the rules of the global superpower and to make their own, to engage with the world in a different way, to pursue Chinese interests outside of the system. And so now you see a competition between these two great powers that have become deeply economically entwined over the last 50 years. And now they're slowly decoupling. And around the world, you see China planting seeds for its new system using state-backed money. Motherfuckers be like, bet you, bet you Ukraine and China would disagree with that bullshit, with that China bullshit. For every Ukraine and China, there's like... 200 countries that you could point to that would absolutely disagree okay so what does that make what does that mean you know what i mean it's so weird it's like pretty much every fucking country at a certain point in time uh in post-world war ii global development has been impacted by united states and has been interfered with by the united states 
even European nations now, which are completely servile to American interests, even European nations at a certain point were absolutely dominated by uh, by the United States of America at a time when they didn't want it. NATO need to invest in infrastructure projects all over the globe. This gives China a presence in many new countries, tying these countries to Chinese debt, which often translates into future leverage. In March 2023, China sent diplomats to the Middle East for the first major effort to broker a peace deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran, these two bitter rivals. This is something that the U.S. couldn't do, and it showed the declining influence that the U.S. has on this region. But the U.S. still remains on top, and they will as long as they can control the economic and financial systems that the world operates on, which they do for now. But China is challenging this as well, working with Brazil, Russia, India, and South Africa, or the BRICS countries, to develop an alternative economic bloc. These are all major growing economies, and they will only become more important in the next two decades. Since 2009, the BRICS countries have been stepping up their cooperation, meeting annually, creating a new development bank to invest in their countries, and coordinating on various policies. The BRICS countries are becoming a potential rival to the G7 countries, which represent the US-led order. BRICS countries are even discussing creating their own currency that they share between these five growing economies. They're creating a, a secondary economy in the world totally independent of the United States. We won't have to talk about sanctions in five years because there'll be so many countries transacting in currencies other than the dollar. That, that we won't have the ability to sanction them. This would be a major challenge to the US dollar, which is currently the standard for international trade and a major reason why everyone has to play nice with the US. Russia's invasion of Ukraine was a major pushback against the Western security and economic order. And it showed us which countries will fall on which side of that divide. You can see that most countries aren't taking a side here. They aren't siding with Russia and China or with the Western bloc. You could call these the non-aligned countries, the undecided Cited, the countries that China and the U.S. will be looking to influence into their system in coming years. Let's highlight the 25 largest economies among these non-aligned countries, at least according to the Economist Intelligence Unit. These are the economies that the U.S. is working to keep on their side, to keep in their system, and that China is trying to woo to join their new transactional system. But this Cold War is different than the last one. Their new transactional system, if you look at those countries, the old transactional system is the IMF and World Bank, which is, according to Western papers at least, objectively worse than the Chinese uh, loan structure that they are putting forward. So, like, I, I, I don't know why we're acting like uh, there is no history there. And these countries were like, I don't know, maybe on the side of the Western Bloc for the longest time for one reason or another. Why do you run cover for the CCP? Um, Because I want to get, uh, I'm a Chinese national. I'm secretly doing a fifth column style infiltration. I've been Chinese since uh, day one. That's why. Or maybe because I have the perspective that I do because I'm looking at it objectively. I don't know. The one where the USA and the Soviet Union forced countries to deeply choose a side based on ideological convictions about capitalism versus communism. This new rising Cold War could be much less black and white. Instead, in this much more globalized and interconnected world, non-aligned countries will exploit this bidding war between the superpowers to get them the best trade and security deals possible. Like in Brazil, where this is already happening. Brazil is a massive country who is a He's in BRICS and then he's saying these are non-aligned countries and then he says Brazil is a non-aligned country and it's like, so what's the B then? I, I, I don't get it. I mean, I, I'm not like a big BRICS truther in general, but what's he talking about? super close ally with the United States. And yet, they're a part of the BRICS bloc with China, which is one reason Brazil refused to sell- Oh, he's talking about non-aligning the Ukraine- Weapons okay. to Ukraine when the country requested a deal. They're already walking this line between their interests that align with the US order and their interests that align with China. Brazil's president traveled to Beijing in April 2023, and not only- I mean, I low-key get it. It's like, why the fuck? If you're Brazil, like, why the fuck do you- uh, have to have a say in what's going on in Ukraine. I, I'm not even, I'm not siding with Russia before everybody fucking yells at me. I think what Russia is doing is objectively wrong and inhumane. But if you're Brazil, like, why the fuck do you care? Don't say human rights. Stop. Human rights are being violated on a daily fucking basis in every part of the fucking planet. Okay? Not just in Ukraine. These countries never care about those other places. They're not giving weapons to Hamas. They're not giving weapons to 
uh, Yemen. My point is that, not that what is happening in Ukraine is good or bad. It is objectively bad. What Russia is doing is objectively bad. My point is, why would uh, a nation state involve itself, especially if they're not a part of NATO? Only did the Brazilian president sign around 20 new agreements on technology, trade, and agriculture, but he actually asked Beijing to help him negotiate the war in Ukraine. So even as the US and China cut ties, Brazil is showing that they're not gonna take a side. They're gonna play both sides to their own benefit. India is kind of doing the same thing, getting lots of cheap oil and nearly half of their weapons from Russia, and then getting a quarter of their weapons from from Europe and recently securing $200 billion in funding from the US for Indian technology startups. Saudi Arabia gets almost all of its weapons from the United States, but is turning away from the US in other ways like trade, where China is now their top trading partner. In late 2022, China and Saudi Arabia signed a strategic partnership agreement, meaning that their leaders will be meeting more frequently. There will be more trade, more technology transfer, and more diplomacy. Turkey is a member of NATO and generally Okay, don't even fucking, don't do it, Johnny. Don't fucking, oh God. Turkey has been and will always be a wild card. Turkey also happens to be the only NATO nation that is actively in conflict with other NATO nations, okay? You cannot, you cannot put Turkey in there and expect a, a consistent result for anybody, okay? They are definitionally uh, inconsistent aligned with the West, but also has to walk a fine line here. Because it has strong economic ties to Russia, Turkey also doesn't want to lose out on China's economic expansion. China has this Belt and Road Initiative that runs right through Turkey, and they're hoping to court more Chinese investment in transportation, energy, and mining. Pakistan is a country that has been aligned with the U.S. in recent years and a partner on the war in terror, but it also entertains investment and trade with <laughs> China, including a $62 billion investment from China's Belt and Road Initiative to create this economic corridor between the two countries. The continent of Africa is full of mostly non-aligned countries. It's also where China has been busy giving huge loans and building bridges, ports, mines, and railways, all with the goal of tying these countries to the future Chinese way of doing things. And China is expanding trade here too, trading $254 billion with Africa in 2021, while the US only traded $44 billion, a sixth the amount of China. China's investment has been swift and effective here and all over the globe in garnering new friends and allies, laying the foundation for their competing world order. But the US isn't just gonna sit back and let this happen, they're already responding. Big names like Kamala Harris, the vice president, or Janet Yellen the head of the Federal Reserve, Antony Blinken, the Secretary of State, have all visited Africa in 2023. President Biden went to Saudi Arabia last year despite calling the country a, quote, pariah state on the campaign trail. He was there to try to claw back some influence uh -huh. that was uh -huh. being taken by China. And then, of course, the U.S. Again, spreading liberal democracy, of course. Doing it in a way, but with pizzazz. And with a little bit of liberal democracy spreading. Don't make no mistake. The U.S. is hitting China straight on, cutting them off from Western technology to hamper their economic and military progress. The U.S. and its allies in Asia are also encircling China with their military in the Pacific, sending billions of dollars of weapons and infrastructure into China's backyard. Okay, in a lot of circumstances, and I mean this in all sincerity, with full sincerity, any Anytime these guys make a video about how China is bad, if you don't automatically have the assumption that China is bad, it kind of feels like they're glazing China and totally and, and totally being like, yeah, this is the reason why China is like very threatened by America. Like how if you don't have the the well-built like social conditioning that declares China to be like an existential threat to American uh, American society. Why would you leave this video with the understanding that like anything China's done has been wrong and also China has no reason to fear America? I mean, seriously, like he just said it right here. Look at this. It was being taken by China. He's mad that China is building uh, and developing relationships with these countries and doing trade with these countries. And then of course the U.S. is hitting China straight on, cutting them off. And then the United States is retaliating to that by cutting them off, off from Western technology. From to Western technology to hamper their economic and military progress. progress. And that's not even the whole story, by the way. A big part of it is also trade. They do not want China to have an advantage in trade. That's why they're trying to cut them off. And it's not even just like American technology. Notice how he said Western technology. Key fact here. Like, 
There is a reason why American envoys will routinely go to other countries. I think it was like, what was it? The Netherlands recently for uh, to stop them and threaten them from uh from from dealing with uh china with respect to their uh like what what was it like their semiconductors i don't remember the exact details god damn it like they will they will regularly go to historic allies or people that are in their sphere of influence and tell them not to fucking sell semiconductor technology to china that's not just because they want to hamper their military and economic development that's because they don't want them to outcompete the United States of America in the development of new semiconductor technologies. Like, think about it. Two nation states are interested in engaging with one another in trade. And America comes in and says, no, you can't do that. I'm not consenting to this. Like, that's fucking nuts. Why? Why would you hamper growth in this way? U.S. and its allies in Asia are also encircling China with their military in the Pacific. And then also this. How, do, how is your takeaway that America is the good guy here? Unless you automatically came into this video with, like, a real and perhaps incredibly overblown fear of china and chinese development which many americans do have so you can watch this and, and not feel like weird about this video and not go oh what the fuck like it doesn't seem like they've done anything super wrong here he didn't even do the classic american propaganda points about why it's bad for china to to develop their own um a power center and and engage in trade in a, in a negative fashion or whatever sending billions of dollars of weapons and infrastructure into china's backyard so it looks like we're in the early days of a new multipolar world, a competition between a great superpower and a rising superpower that wants to lead a new system based on different values. The result is likely the undoing of a lot of the- What? What are the values? Here's the thing. Even if I am, even if I was a comatose child and I just got out of a coma and my uh, Madeline Albright loving mom said, Hassan, you have to watch this video and this is the first video I ever watched. I have no other assumptions, okay? I look at this video and I go, hey, mom, what are the values that you're talking about with, with respect to China? Because earlier in the video, Johnny Harris, who I, I assume is your favorite uh, YouTuber, that's why you showed this to me after I got out of my coma, said China doesn't want to impose any values on any other country and wants to operate on the strict boundaries of trade. But now, Johnny, this man you're showing me, is also telling me China wants to operate with new values, a different uh, perspective. What's going on there? I have no other op uh, opinions on the matter. I'm just watching this video that you showed me. I just got out of a coma, and it, it make it make sense. Globalization and interconnectedness that has developed in the last 70 years. And for now, I think what we'll see is countries won't be choosing a side hastily. Instead, They'll play both of these great powers off of each other to get the best deal for their country. I'm not sure how long they'll be able to do this as tensions rise and the pressure mounts to choose a side. But for now, what's clear is that we're moving into uncharted waters. Chat, I haven't been taking notes. Someone please share. I don't know. He didn't. I mean, it wasn't like that bad of a video overall. Choose a side, Assam. Bro, you know my side. Don't make me say it. Oh, my fingernails. Disgusting. I don't know if you can see the details properly ah! in that, but that <laughs> is... <laughs> he has the nasty-ass fingernails in there, too. Oh, that's so awesome. The only man on the planet with worse fucking fingernails than me.